What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Banjo Kazooie. Banjo's game ends in my tower. Turn it up! I need full power! Yes, your grindy ship. Transformation soon be complete. I figured it's about time we see the game over screen. Help me, Banjo! I feel all buggy! Oh, do I sound like Jerry Seinfeld? Hot Grunty and her moans. Look at Grunty, she's a beauty. I'm much prettier than Tootie. Oh, you are, mistress. Mumbo comes running in. Grunty, nice, come back to Mumbo's skull, yes. Oi, oi, oi. Banjo, your sister wants a word with you. Now. You messed up, but it's awesome because the music's good still. Whatever. I didn't really know when to show this. I guess I should have included it at the end of last episode. I could still technically do that, but whatever. It'll be how we start. So we left off, we beat Clanker's Cavern. <laughs> Where are we exactly here? An hour and 40 minutes, my gosh! 33 jigsaws, 300 notes. It's time to go to World 4. There's also a jiggy we have to get. We hit the switch in Clanker's belly or whatever. Actually, it was in his blowhole. But we have to go find that thing. I think it's actually right here. Two eyes protruded. Yeah, it is definitely this room. And so shall it be long. Nice from Day of the Tentacle. Makes no sense here. You have no power here, Gandalf the Grey. He strips off his robe. I don't know. Lord of the Rings, dude. So, we've done all this stuff. I think we need to press on. Yes, a note door. 180, we have 300. Tootie says she's fine with me. If you go home, I'll set her free. I ain't buying that crap. Oh, look at that. So Bubble Gloop, I believe, is over here. Nice tree. Is it yours? Dumb and dumber references aside. Bubble Gloop Swamp. Uh, another one I remember my friend telling me. He was so excited about this game. I think he told me a lot about it too because I didn't have it. I wish I could remember things. Well, yeah, clearly we're gonna get the wading boots this time. Still loving that sign. Bubble Gloop in particular, that one seems to have extra glow to it. Maybe it's just my imagination. I'll get ready for that Phil Collins in the air tonight. Keep your eyes open for your new move. I just saw it, big face, but these guys, they want eggs. And who doesn't? That's terrible timing. Yummy. Cactus likes that. That's right, there's a whole chain of them. I remember seeing this before. They want yummy eggs, too. Well, let's go get that move that's over here. Am I would. There's nothing Phil Collins about this at all. These are the wading boots, chicken legs. Wears them so you can safely wade through dangerous areas like the swamp for the midtime. Okay, chicken or kazooie, let's go grab a pair. Now you know all the swamp moves. Get out of here. Kind of a uh, minimal, isn't it? Whatever. Now we can walk through piranha-infested water. Bubble Gloop Swamp. The music's doing some stuff. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. But I feel like this might be a forgettable world. Let somebody out there. This might be their favorite. Who knows? I see banana gin banana ginjo, yes. Notes first though, because music comes first always. Well, let's go get those boots and get that mumbo token. Because we can. This music is absolutely nuts. 
It can quickly get irritating. I like the turbo shoes better. There we go. We got our maximum 10 feathers. I think we need them in this stage, too. Again, snippets are coming back. But I'm not at all trying to be like, oh, this is a blind playthrough. I've already told you the story. We don't need to recite it a million times. But it does make me wonder. That's a jiggy, clearly. What if David Wise was the composer instead of Grant Kirkhope? No hate on Grant Kirkhope at all. I just wonder what David Wise would do for this stage. And I think the answer lies in Donkey Kong Country 2 and those swamp stages, which was very much Phil Collins in the air tonight. That sounds amazing. I don't know why I'm on a Phil Collins kick. At least those two songs I mentioned last episode in this one. It's thundering, wow. I heard that as in the brief pause between the chaos of the music of this group. Notes! I love thunderstorms, though. Actually, you know what? Get up there! Oh. Hey, I didn't take damage. Keep your smelly feet out. How do you know they're smelly? What if Banjo has impeccable hygiene? These are things that are not addressed. Now, this is pretty obvious what we gotta do. All the different kinds of smacks and whacks. Uh -huh. We're doing all right. Let's ride that leaf. This is kind of neat. It's not often you see a swamp stage. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, you know how sweet it would be to play a game that's like all Phil Collins music? Stuff like In the Air Tonight and Easy Lover. Just very bass heavy, nice... Oh, this is timed, I believe. <laughs> Phil Collins' album covers, too. He's just always staring into your soul like, yeah, you know you like this crap. And then you usually do like this crap. I'm gonna wait on all this stuff. Oh, that turtle down there. Nuts! Crap. What? An ugly, hairy trespasser. Oh, we gotta use gold feathers for this, I think. Mass Madness! My god, there's like a million things happening right now. It's thundering outside. I don't know what the game's doing. Gotta save those feathers, though. Let's go, pal. Get back here. Oh, right, you know what? You're too tough for us flippers. Let's take our gold. Oh, jeez! That was a whole bunch of madness. So where were we? It's an alligator. Or a crocodile. I think it is a crocodile, actually. I don't know, I just want to play a game that's kind of like an adventure like this. But... Something you would play to just relax to. Because Banjo's a little bit crazy, right? It can be relaxing. But clearly, it's all silly and mass madness, like we just saw. What does this do? Oh! How do you get up there? That was a really tall thing in that room. I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe there's a flight pad or something. I don't know. I don't know. I just wanted an adventure game where you could just kind of zone out. It's kind of trippy, maybe. Yeah, this is seeming like a kind of simple world. You just go to the different corners and either go to the top or... 
Oh no, I'm getting that, dude. Uh, I guess I'm still in that mood from that late night playlist I was talking about. I was explicitly looking for songs that are like In the Air Tonight, Easy Lover, stuff like that. That has that very smooth bass line. And just everything else is so subtle and just... I don't know what you would call it. But actually that chained into looking up Victor Wooten bass stuff. This guy makes a crazy noise. My feet are so numb and cold. Yeah, the noise, you have to stomp his four things. I know that much. And the noise he makes is absolutely insane. <laughs> That's a bit better. Wow, that was a huge flash just now. I wonder if that's gonna get picked up. That'd be crazy. Look at that ginger. That could be a problem, though. Mmm, tank tub's warm at last. Perhaps you'd like this. Yeah, I hope I don't lose power. That would be, that'd be bad. We're just getting started, and I just bought milk. Every time I buy new milk, there's a storm and I lose power. And then it's like, is the milk good anymore? The issues. Bubble group? Bubble crawl? <laughs> Isn't that Dave Chappelle or something? I don't know. Tip Top's in here, though. Diddy Kong Racing. Press start. Tip Top's the man in that game. Hey, please. A famous Tip Top choir will now perform my latest work. Oh, memory. Okay. Bit short, isn't it, Shell Boy? We'll see, you copy what you just heard for less than one. It's not Tip Top's voice, he says, Wreck it go! And watch out! <laughs> I love Diddy Kong Race. It's storming. Where's that game, too? That's what I want. Phil Collins' music, very bass heavy. Oh, crap, I gotta think. Yeah, bass heavy, smooth, relaxing, almost like an acid trip or something. Not that I would know. And rain, heavy storms, and you just walk around. One more lesson. Crap! Okay, that ending is easy, just blue, 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 blue. It's a bad way to remember it, but blue, blue, anyway. Blue, blue, I'm so blue without you. You ain't crap! If you would just shut up. Magnificent, a true masterpiece here. Take this trinket I found earlier. It looks delicious. It kind of does, though, if it wasn't... If it was real. You can make it real. Sorry, there's nothing more I can teach you. Well, halfway there, yeah, bubble glue, bubble chrome is kind of, uh... It's a gloop. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I could take it or leave it. That's an interesting concept. Ranking the worlds of Banjo-Tooie and Kazooie. I don't have any of my Banjo-Tooie footage. I could download it from YouTube, but it's going to be super low quality then. To do such a video, which probably already exists by somebody else, and then it's like, what's the point? Who are you? Let's try this again. I don't know, I know people want more top tens and things like that. Is, is that really interesting or is it just the same old? Uh, you know what? You know, this guy's gonna appear at the top of it. Yep, I should've, I knew. It's alright. This isn't a speed run. 
We are useless to society. And that is how we play, that is how we live our lives. Complete garbage. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can make you want to jump off a cliff. That is... Not what I'm saying to you, that's... My brain talking to myself. <laughs> But it is true, there's always somebody better than you at stuff. Which brings up, let's go back to Victor Wooten. Victor Wooten is a bass god. He, like, mastered that instrument when he was eight. Crap, where are all the Jinjos? But yeah, that's the thing. People are typically known for one thing. That they're truly good at, or a master at what they do, you know? And for Victor Wooten, bass is his thing. Ah, oh, nuts. But it's so easy to look at people like that and be like, Oh, I wish I could do that. And it's like, well, if you put the time in, you could be sort of like that. Although talent is also a thing. I don't know, it just always... Whenever you look at other people, it makes you assess yourself compared to them. Which I know you're not supposed to do, but how do you not do that? How else are you supposed to figure out what it is you want to do? Pretend like you're the only person alive in the world and just kind of be like, Oh, I like this. Let's pursue that further. That's how you become a weirdo and it's like, What do you do for a living? I like trees. But there is a guy out there who could tell you more information about trees than you could ever imagine. And you could look at that guy and be like, Dang, man, I wish I knew that much about trees. Because you could think about the jobs, the money that's involved, and how you don't have that. And then you just get all grumping and flumping and everything's terrible. Story of our life, because we're kind of insane. And don't like the skin we're in, but that's okay, because we are going to a crocodile gator thing. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Now we're just spouting crap, as we do. Was there a guy? Yeah. Old Blue Eyes here. It's like Hungry Hungry Hippos. Very nice. Look at that orange ginger, we found one. We gotta get to him, though. Well, let's just carry on. Remember when I mentioned Chronophobia? That's a song by Bad Religion, Chronophobia. But it's also a real thing, and it's the fear of time. And then there's a subset of it, like Chronometrophobia, which is like the fear of things that tell time, like watches and stuff. That one's weird. <laughs> but Chronophobia, sometimes I wonder. They say there's two groups of people that tend to get it. Elderly, because they're aware that death is around the corner, so they're a little bit obsessed with time and worried about it. And prison inmates, because they're constantly counting down until they're released and stuff. And there's nothing better to do. So it's like... But they say any traumatic event can, that can cause great anxiety or whatever can produce chronophobia. And sometimes I wonder if I have something like it. But I don't think it's full-blown chronophobia because there's emphasis that you're, like, afraid of the end, dying. And I'm not afraid of dying at all. But I'm obsessed with the loss of time, how nothing is the same. And how everything is going way too fast and, like, I have no control over it. Yeah, let's... It wants us to use the boots, let's do it. 69 notes. Not anymore. Ah, nuts. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about these boots. Bubble gloop is just kinda... Nice. It's alright, I suppose. But the boots are a little bit obnoxious. Yeah, I read something about chronophobia, though. And it did sound a little bit more of, like, what I tend to feel. 
Uh, I know that's a jiggy that's timed and very hard. But do we go to the swamp path first and then come back to this? I don't know. Decisions. Indecision. Whatever, let's just go for it. We'll come back. Watch it be wrong, and that's why we're indecisive in the first place, because we always choose the wrong one. Everything is wrong, everything is madness, I don't like it. Thanks, so good. Mumbo, huh? Well, we got all our feathers back almost. Yeah, we don't want to be a crocodile yet. I know that's what happens. So see? I chose poorly. Like I was saying, that's why we're indecisive in the first place, because it matters. It doesn't matter, but... In stressful, anxious times, it does greatly matter. Alright, can we do this? Yes! I'm surprised I got that. First try. Those skinny paths are nothing to sneeze at now. Well, we can be a little careful on the way back, because it doesn't matter. But yeah, that other thing I saw was like a general unease with how fast... ...time seems to go. And you can't make... To an extent that you can't make sense of it. And I was like, that sounds more like what I'm talking about. Rather than the fear of the end. Yeah, what does Mumbo have in here? Oh, it's this one, okay. It's like, how do you get up? I don't know, I'm like, I'm looking for the word, because I don't think chronophobia is it. But it's similar to whatever it is I'm searching for, this... ...obsession with the loss of the past, kind of. Like, is it just dealing with loss? Uba Daka! I don't know, maybe that's what it is. Uba Daka. Wait, Mambo need new boots. Only kidding. Okay, whatever. Tell me nothing about the gator. Uh, there's a mini game. Yeah, you can chomp. You gotta beat another crocodile in some mini game. Isn't there a way out of here quickly? Okay. Why is that window even there? <laughs> I don't know, Banjo's happy go lucky, but the music's kinda nuts. Maybe that's why I'm going nuts. Take the long way. But yeah, this is what the crocodile can do. Or alligator, whatever it is. So now we can go get the notes that are in the swamp that are not near boots. And the Jinjos. And play that mini game for the Jiggy, too. And then we should be pretty much done with this place. I don't know, if I did rank the worlds of this and Banjo-Tooie, this one would probably be towards the bottom. I like it, but... I think if it was storming and had more Phil Collins-ish music... <laughs> like Donkey Kong Country 2, I guess. It would be that much better. But I really like what Grant Kirkhope does, too. It's just really this stage. Oh, here we go. This is the minigame. Let's do it. Wait a minute, there was more notes. Oh, the other nostril, that makes sense. We're almost there! Uh, there's something about this, though. Oh, you sound like Mr. Patch! Mr. Vile, greediest croc of all. Press A to accept. Eat more red yumblies, okay. Wait, yeah, those running shoes, we don't have access to them yet. I think we have to come back to fully do this. Maybe not, but... Ugh, okay, it's been about, like, eight minutes trying that. 
you have to do three different games, and I got so close so many times on that last game, but I think I need the sprint shoes. That's why they're there. I don't know what world we get those. So yeah, this is our first instance of having to come back for a Jiggy, maybe. There's probably a way to do it now, but... I've given up on it. Let's get back to whatever we were doing, and uh... We gotta find the other Jinjos and the rest of the notes. So we're going for nine Jiggies right now, not ten, because that one I'm putting off. And I know we have to take this croc outside like we did with the termite in Mumbo's Mountain. Actually, yeah, this is the second transformation. That's so weird. It was just the termite in this. This is the beginning again, okay. I'm all kinds of thrown off from failing that game so much. Oh, I'm trying to think of other games that have a swamp level. It doesn't really fit into Mario games much. It's not one of the recycled tropes, I guess. Where the heck was that orange Jinjo? It was by that alligator. Which I think we... Oh, there it is. There's a pink one, though. Yeah. Okay, we gotta finish that alligator thing. I forgot all about that. What is the difference again between alligators and crocodiles? Here we go. This is what I was looking for. Please tell me there's more notes. We're so close. Oh, they're in the corner. I, I just saw them, but let's get this Jinjo. There we go. There's eight. And we know number nine. We have to go back to Banjo. Yes! We did it! Okay, so now nothing matters. It's a shame about that crocodile game. I didn't notice there was two tokens here. So now we have to go finish that crocodile egg shooting thing for that ninth jiggy. And now we gotta be a crocodile again, or do we? Actually, I don't think we do. Whatever, I gotta get to Mumbo. This is gonna take a while. Uh, just chicken. I'm missing a honeycomb, too. Hmm. Okay, we're back. The turtle, the turtle has the honeycomb. But I think you have to... Wait, where the heck is that alligator thing? I thought it was over here. Oh, it is. It's over here. Okay. There we go. That's all the jiggies I can get right now. Notice my arm is peeling like crazy from sunburn I got like two weeks ago now. So, uh, yeah, get in there, dude. Jeez. I think you have to leave an exit after the tipped up thing for this to appear, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Bubble Gloop Swamp is done and kind of good riddance. It was neat, but... Eh. 
Well, there's pterodactyl land from Tui, though. That's a headache. So we have to come back, and we have to be a crocodile again, but not right away. I think we need to go do something in the lair as Banjo. And then become crocodile and go back. So yeah, we gotta unlock the next world. Yes. Sorry about the commentary this time. I feel like it's all over and just nonsense. Actually, you know what I was saying? I think Grant Kirkhope tried harder with the music in this game than Banjo-Tooie, which was a stupid thing to say anyway. In here... Yep. So now I gotta go behind this wall, but... I know, aspects of that instrumentation coming out of the level just now reminded me of Grunty's Industries, which I think is a song that was better than the Bubble Gloop Swamp song, for example. There we go, freeze easy peak, or at least the puzzle part of it. I think everybody knows this song, even if you never played this game before. Yes, the glowy sign again. Now, over here is what I was talking about. This ice thing, you can only break it as Banjo, or Kazooie, I guess. Yeah, but now we need to be a crocodile to fit through here. And I forget what's back there exactly. It might not be important, but... Yeah. So I think that's a good stopping point. I struggled. I'm going to cut like six to eight minutes out of this video. Um, so Freeze Easy Peak is next. Let's just double check. We should just be one jiggy short in the swamp whenever we find the turbo shoes. Yep. So, all right. Thanks for watching, you guys. And uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.